Lord be with you. On the Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter, it's always called a low Sunday, and we have um, the resurrection appearance of Jesus one week after Easter, where he visits the Apostle Thomas. So we'll look at that, and we'll look at the question of faith. Faith is both a struggle and a surrender. We begin uh, our worship with the, we, by preparing our hearts, and we do that through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock, who guides us into all truth. Let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our sisters and brothers as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life given in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his Son to atone for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven, that the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
first reading is from Acts, the fourth chapter. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what had been sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 John, the first and second chapter. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were, lo <coughs> were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said, again, said to them again, Peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciple told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'd like to invite the children up. We think we have enough children to come on up today. Okay, can any of you, this is a tough question, can any of you tell me who I am? <laughs> Chandler, you say, Pastor Dan, how do you know? I went to vote this week. And when I went there, they wanted some ID. So I pulled out my trusty wallet and I handed him this. And you tell me if you think this will tell them who I am. What this is, my voter registration card. And if I handed that to someone, would they really know who I was? Gives my name and address. And, and she trusted me that I was who my voter registration card said I was and let me vote. How about this one? Will that one tell you who I am? It's my driver's license. It has my picture on it. Well, Thomas, the apostle, he wouldn't believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And he wanted Jesus' driver's license. Did he ask for his driver's license? He did even more than that. He said, I want to put my hand in the marks where the nails were and the hole in his side where the spear went in. I want to be able to put my finger right in that. There he is, checking out Jesus' hands. It doesn't ever say that Thomas touched Jesus, but it does say as soon as he saw Jesus and saw his wounds and was able to identify Jesus, he fell down before Jesus and worshipped. He said, my Lord and my God. It's pretty neat, don't you think? So how do we know Jesus? Well, thankfully, he's the risen Christ who died, has the marks of the nails in his hands, died for us. And we too, our response should be, my Lord and my God. How about we have a prayer? Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. 
we're thankful that he died for us. Help us to be your forgiving people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. went to a Rick Springfield concert last night, Mick and I did. And it's never good to eat at midnight on Saturday night. Anyway, he has an identity problem. People always want to call him Rick Springsteen after Bruce Springsteen, who is much more popular than he is. It's a whole other story. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to talk about Thomas. We're going to talk about doubt. We're going to talk about doubt as a struggle. We could even say faith as a struggle. And faith as surrender. We see both of those in this text. Flannery O'Connor, that great short story writer and, and uh, Christian novelist of the last century, Roman Catholic, she said this, when we get our spiritual house in order, we'll be dead. This goes on, she said, you arrive at enough certainty to be able to make your way, but it is making it in darkness. Don't expect faith to clear things up for you. It is trust, not certainty. Trust, not certainty. And Paul Tillich, that famous theologian, said, doubt is a necessary element of faith. But let's take a look at the Apostle Thomas, and we're going to take a, round, a long trip around. But in 1497... A uh, Portuguese ship captain by the name of Da Gama set sail, and he, this is five years after Columbus set sail, and he headed west. And he got as far as the coast of Brazil when he finally was able to pick up the favorable currents that shot him around the tip of Africa. And he went along the coast of Africa, when he got to Kenya, he picked up an Arab ship pilot who then piloted them over to India. And he had two purposes for this trip. One was financial. If he could find a direct route from India to Europe, he would become the Bill Gates of his day, a billionaire in his day. So the first reason for making that trip was financial. The second one reason was, and all the, the trips seemed to be that way, was religious. He had a ship loaded with priests, zealous priests, who are going to now Christianize India. But when the ship landed, Those priests were surprised that there were Christians all over the place. Churches were built all over the place. They had priests all over the place. And they wondered, how could this be? And they said, they were a, a form of Eastern Orthodox uh, Christians, and they... Um, Syriac was the language that their scriptures were written in, and they called themselves the Mar Toma Christians, the Church of Thomas. And they said, well, you should be surprised. Thomas came to us after Jesus was raised, 
Thomas came to us. And our faith has been, is almost 1,500 years old. In fact, the ironic thing is it was older than Christianity was in Portugal. Now, of course, there's no way to verify that Thomas actually made the trip. If he did make the trip, it was an extraordinary missionary trip, even to surpass the missionary trips the Apostle Paul would take. But there is... So we cannot prove that Thomas himself made the trip, but the fact that they call themselves the Mar Thomas Church or the Church of St. Thomas uh, is, uh, is very interesting. My whole point is something happened to Thomas. In our story, Easter evening, the disciples are hiding out in the, uh, some room Locked doors, we believe it possibly was the upper room where Jesus had the Last Supper with the disciples. Very fearful, Jesus appeared in their midst, said, peace be with you, shalom, breathed on them the Holy Spirit, gave them the keys to the kingdom, but Thomas wasn't there. And he says, I will not believe until I have his identity. The nails in his, uh, the nail marks in his hands, and the spear hole in his side. Jesus shows up the next week and says, Thomas, come here. Take and put your hands where you want to. And Thomas just fell down and said, Lord, my Lord and my God. First thing we struggle with in faith. It is a struggle. It's a struggle with doubt. And as Paul Tillich says, faith is a necessary element of doubt. One thing you might not know about Martin Luther, Martin Luther had a, a word for this. He said his life could be summarized by one German word, anfektong, anfektong. It's a word that's hard to translate, but it, it's one filled with emotions, and it includes all the darts of the evil one, all the threats of Rome, all the fleshly struggle with doubt and depression. Luther wanted to write a book about this word, and he said, without anfektong, no one can understand scripture, faith, the fear or love of God, one cannot know the meaning of hope, who is, who is never to trials. Luther's life was this impassioned struggle, this constant struggle with doubt and faith. Often, he doubted himself. Frederick Buechner may have... Uh, said it, expressed it best for our day. Whether your faith is that there is a God or that there is no God, if you don't have any doubts, you are either kidding yourself or asleep. Doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. They keep it moving. I've got something funny today. Doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. They keep it moving. And I like that. Whether or not your faith is that there is a God or there is no God, if you don't have doubts, you are asleep. So Thomas, indeed, struggled with his doubts. But he also did something which is a huge element of faith. And that is, despite doubt, we surrender. Thomas surrendered. Henry Nouwen shared an experience that he had developed. He had um, gotten to know the flying rod leaves. 
the Flying Rodleys. They were a German trapeze artist group, a troupe of uh, German trapeze artists. And he got to know them and actually was able to go and practice with them and work out with them. And he talked to the leader and he said, uh, how is it you can fly through the air and, and seem to have no fear? And he says, oh, my job is easy. I'm the flyer. And he wrote this. As a flyer, I must have complete trust in my catcher. The public might think that I am the great star of the trapeze, but the real star is Joe, my catcher. He has to be there for me with split-second precision and grab me out of the air. I have simply to stretch out my arms and hands and wait for him to catch me. The worst thing the flyer can do, he says, the worst thing the flyer can do is try to catch the catcher. A flyer must fly and a catcher must catch. And the flyer must trust with outstretched arms that his catcher will be there for him. The flyer must trust with outstretched arms that his catcher will be there for him. I don't know about you, but sometimes my life seems to be like one flying through the air. And we simply need to trust that God will be there to catch. And that is faith. That's surrender. Thomas surrendered my Lord and my God. Emil Brunner, the theologian, wrote this. Faith's closest analogy in our daily experience is found in entrusting oneself to someone. To entrust oneself to another means to abandon the mastery of oneself, to give oneself to the other. Can you imagine having open heart surgery? The doctor tells you what needs to be done. And what do you do? Well, just put me under, doc, and take care of it. Surrender. Of all things, surrender to a surgeon. Let me end with this story. It's about Vicki McCrary. She lost her husband and her two-year-old son in a fire. This happened about 15 years ago. She then said this, with God's help, I was able to raise my two other children as a single parent and I learned to depend upon God. And then she was thinking that she had dealt with her fair share of pain and suffering in this world, and she was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of breast cancer. Would her faith be strong enough, people wondered, to carry her through? And this is what she said. I saw this as an opportunity to run to God God is my only source of strength. When this happened, I knew that was the only place I could go. Vicki McCrary understood surrender. So, faith is a struggle. We struggle with our doubts. But faith is surrender despite our doubts. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead, and the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that the resurrection of Christ has defeated sin and death, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon your church, gracious God, that we may be one of one heart and soul and live together in unity. Help us bring the light of your reconciling gospel of forgiveness and peace to the whole world. Let us pray. Creator God, we pray for the sun and moon and the sea and all living creatures. May all see in the beauty of creation your good pleasure is revealed. Let us pray. Send your shalom upon leaders of the world and those who work for peace. May all live together in unity and work for the common good. Let us pray. Faithful God, we pray for those who doubt and those who are in any need. Send your healing to the sick, especially Deb Bauer, Hover Chase, Gary Coffey, Kelly Cowell, Cliff Dykeman, Mickey Fuller, Tammy Hamilton, Scotty Inman, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Verdine Miller, Wayne Myers, Denise Newbold, Michelle Powell, Wayne Sproul, Rick Stevenson, Florence Stilwell, Bethany Tyndale, Janice Trotter, and Christian Michalazen. Are there any others? We give you thanks that Christ has destroyed death and brought eternal life. We pray that you comfort those who mourn, especially the fam family and friends of Craig Inman and of William Rader. Let us pray. Faithful God, we pray for those who join in community here and for those who are absent from our gathering. May we all proclaim with Thomas, my Lord and my God. Let us pray. Holy God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you, gave, you have granted new life, abundant renewal, and salvation. Hear our prayers for the sake of, <coughs> of the one who has set us free, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings as you have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on, the bread, on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Once a month, sometimes twice a month, we commune via intinction. Today we, we do so. That's where you will receive the bread or a wafer in your hand. You hold on to it until the chalice comes by and you dip or intinct it in the wine. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. life-giving God, we give you thanks for nourishing us with the bread of heaven and the wine of love, Jesus our risen Savior. As you send us into the world, guard us from the power of evil, keep us in unity with all your people, and by your Spirit move us to testify to your grace in our words and our actions. Through Jesus, through Christ our Lord. Amen. have just a couple of announcements. Those interested in our new member class will meet right afterwards in the, in the library. And you will notice on Thursday night, the 16th, there is a Holocaust remembrance service. Uh, if you remember a few years ago, we had it here, and uh, or we were able to be the host. It is now, this year it's hosted, every other year it's hosted by Temple um, Israel. And that again is the case this year. So Thursday night, 7 o'clock. I don't have anything else to emphasize. If you noticed in the newspaper, Rod, uh, um, Rob Bergen's son, Carter, got a hole in one. If you want to read the article, it's on the bulletin board. Some, I, Lisa Westland was nice enough to bring me that. I didn't notice it myself. And the other thing to notice, Daniel, Danny Gutierrez was nominated for Teacher of the Year. We, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> I mean, there's one of, he's one of half a dozen that are nominated. So that, but that's an honor. That's great. We love you, Danny. We want you to know that. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, share the good news, hallelujah. <laughs>